Hello everyone, welcome to the weekly Purple Penny uh, coin video. If you are watching this week on YouTube, we do apologise for the fact that there was no video last week. We had a technical problem with the sound, so the sound was uh, ruined. It meant that uh, the live video couldn't be used to post to YouTube later, so I do apologise to that and I, for that, and I do apologise to the people who did watch live last week and had to put up with that. Uh, I have spent a bit of time working on a new computer to do the videos with, and unfortunately that failed miserably, so we're back on the old computer. Uh, done a few tweaks, and hopefully that prevents any problems from today. Let me just adjust this light a little bit here. Now... Uh, last week was exceedingly busy in the shop. We uh, we had a lot of people in here. Every day was extremely busy. Uh, we sold a lot. We bought a lot. And of course, on Thursday we had the uh, Royal Australian Mint release. Uh, and we'll do a wrap up of that in a minute. Uh, no show and tell. I must admit, it's been so frantic that I haven't had a chance to pull anything out and uh, put anything aside to show you, but uh, I will do so next week. I'll have some interesting things to show you next week. Right, let's get into it. Now, of course, last Thursday was the Royal Australian Mint release. We had uh, the baby sets released, the mint set and the proof set, and then we also had the mint mark coin suite released. So the baby sets were, uh, they sold better than we expected. We did very well out of them. We sold pretty much all of our allocation online and in the shop. Uh, and I suspect that's because Ice Right have closed here in Adelaide. Of course, they closed several months ago, so we have picked up a lot of their traffic. So we had a lot of people coming in on. Thursday and Friday and Saturday picking up those baby sets. The baby sets themselves were, uh, the coins were excellent. They of course had the uh, the childlike designs on all of the denominations. Those designs had been available in the last two years sets. Uh, the proof sets are still in the bamboo packaging that no one likes. And the unk sets had a, a white cardboard insert around the coins and i got to say, it looked like it hadn't been finished. Uh, it's a strange, strange uh, cardboard insert. It really needed some design on it. My only other observation is that the white boxes of the baby sets are very easily marked uh, to the point where Catherine was careful to keep the, uh, the baby sets away from the mint mark sets because the blue ink on the mint mark sets could actually mark the outside of the baby set. So that is a bit of a problem from my point of view. Now, the other coins of interest last week was the Mint Mark Suite. There was the four coin Ark set with the C Mint Mark and the three Privy Marks. There was the silver dollar coin, which had a mintage of 5,000 coins, and then there was the gold coin. The gold coin wasn't available. Uh, we're still waiting on that. Uh, the silver coin proved to be in demand on the day. Now, we knew several weeks ago that we weren't going to have enough to meet demand. Uh, we asked for more immediately after we were given our allocation and we didn't get any. Uh, we had a lot of phone calls during the day about those and a lot of people coming in looking for them but uh, we just didn't get enough. So those silver dollar coins, there was a mintage of 5,000 on those. Uh, release price was 60 bucks. Then there was the Mint Mark and Privy Mark set. Uh, they sold extremely well as well in the shop and online. Uh, I gather there was a bit of miss, uh, a bit of a typo in a RAM email about those mint mark sets, suggesting that they were going to be limited to twenty thousand. Uh, of course, the mint mark sets are always unlimited. Um, hang on a second, we've uh, we've got some spam. You know you've made it when we've got some spam. All right, let's just get rid of that. Right. Uh, so the mint mark sets are not unlimited. I gather some people, when they thought they were going to be uh, limited to 20,000, that they tried to buy as many as they could, hoping to capitalise on the secondary market. And I gather there was a bit of uh, a bit of bitterness afterwards from some of those people when they realised that the mint had made a mistake. Uh, 
Uh, we did say they were unlimited last week, and indeed they were unlimited. So um, not a bad set, the mint mark set. The packaging is quite nice. Yeah, the packaging is very nice. Right, let's say a few hellos here before we get into the next item. Hello, Mike, Paul, Alex, Tanya, uh, Gary, David, John. Uh, yes, Mike, it is a bit rough when you need to handle the sets with white gloves. Uh, it is a bit annoying, actually. And hello, Daryl. Daryl is a regular in the shop here. It's good to see you watching, Daryl. Uh, hello, Catherine. Catherine is still catching up on our packaging from a few days off last week. Uh, the internet doesn't stop even when she has a holiday. So uh, she had to come in yesterday, unfortunately, and do some work yesterday, too, to just try and catch up on all of that. Now, there is no word from the Mint on releases for next month yet. Usually they announce it on uh, on the preceding release day, so usually we would have heard last Thursday, but we haven't heard anything, so we don't know what's going on yet. Uh, as soon as we find out anything, we'll pop that up on our Facebook page. Now, last week we spoke about some shipwreck coins from the Isles of Skilly, which is a, uh, a group of islands off the southwest coast of England. Uh, a group of those coins were being uh, auctioned from a single collection from several different shipwrecks. We talked about the types of coins and some of the shipwrecks that those coins were from. That auction has been uh, run and done, and those coins realized uh, what a 6,400 pounds, which is about $10,000, so not a bad little uh, result there for 51 coins. What's well, that, an average of about $200 each. Uh, in a New York coin show last week, uh, the coin show closed at 7 p.m., but a, a dealer chose to leave at about 6.30, uh, left his stock packaged up behind the table, and apparently $100,000 worth of coins were stolen from behind the table. Uh, the person who uh, stole them was caught on camera doing so, uh, but they haven't uh, they haven't managed to locate that person. So, you know, as a dealer ourselves, when we go to coin shows, we wait until closing, until all the uh, people are out of the hall before we pack up. And I would suggest that that dealer who has had $100,000 worth of coins stolen will do so in the future. Um, hopefully they'd show up, uh, but I wouldn't be too hopeful about that. Right, uh, America's best known U.S. cent collector uh, died just recently, and just before he died, he consigned his collection of several hundred graded U.S. cents to great collections. And uh, amongst those coins were some notable coins, including the uh, the single highest graded wheat cent, which I think was an MS69. It was a 1918, I believe. MS69, which fetched several hundred thousand dollars. Uh, but there was also a double die, a double obverse die, 1958 cent. So what's a double obverse die? Uh, that's where the, in this case, probably the production die when it was made. Uh, so the production die is made by pressing a, a hub into it. So a hub is a, a steel impression that looks like the coin. Uh, that gets pressed into uh, a blank metal die which produces the reverse image and sometimes that needs to be pressed into that die multiple times to achieve a full image imagine though that between pressings the hub actually rotates slightly so what you end up with is uh, doubled or even tripled images of that coin in the production die and that means that every coin that is struck by that die has those multiple impressions on it. So if you are an Australian collector, you would know about the 1962 Double Nose Penny, which is a triple hubbed die. Uh, so that die was, was pressed three times out of alignment, so you can actually see three distinct impressions on it. Uh, the 1958 cent has two impressions on it. Now, collectors of double dies in, U in the US are... Uh, much more common than they are here in Australia and as such a lot of these double die coins fetch huge money the two best ones the two best known ones are the 1955 and 1972 double die cents the 1958 double die cent was only discovered in the early 1980s and to this point in time uh, there's only three that are known 
Uh, one is graded by PCGS as MS65 and two are graded by PCGS as MS64. Uh, the one that sold in this gentleman's auction just recently was the MS65, one of three known, and it sold for 1.13 US million plus commission. So, you know, you're looking at about one and a half million dollars for that coin. Compare that to Australian coins that sell for that money, and you are talking about true numismatic rarities here in Australia that sell for that sort of money. You're talking about proof 1930 pennies, you're talking about five uh, gold Adelaide five pounds, you're talking about Adelaide ingots, you're talking about things that are truly rare and this is 1.13 million American dollars for a variety. Okay, for a variety, it just shows you how the strength of coin collecting in the USA compared to here in Australia. 1.13 million dollars for a double die obverse 1958 cent one of three known and this one being the highest graded by PCGS quite a remarkable auction result that one I do like my metal detecting finds and there was a great one this week uh, a group of three friends in 2019 found uh, over 600 coins in a field in let me just load up the slide here in a field in uh, Buckinghamshire so they found 627 coins uh, as you know if you find treasure in the in the uk it has to be declared as treasure uh, and then the british coroner actually judges whether the keeping of those that treasure is uh, in the public interest and if it is then museums and things like that get the first option on buying it and uh, the proceeds of the sale then are split amongst the landowners and the detectorists who find it so these three gentlemen found 627 coins including 12 full gold nobles a gold noble is a a gold coin that was struck from about the middle of the 1300s until the middle of the 1400s uh, the weight of it changed several times during its, its existence the estimated value of the treasure is 150,000 pounds look I suspect it is more than that uh, given that you will struggle to get a gold noble for anything under six or seven thousand pounds uh, what is a gold noble it's a coin that is valued at was valued at one third of a pound which is six shillings and eight pence initially they weighed nine grams and the weight of those was debased down to under eight grams over a hundred years or so I don't know what fineness gold it is I couldn't find any information on that but to give you an idea of uh, the value of that coin in the Middle Ages, an unskilled labourer in the year 1300 was earning 40 shillings a year, which is two pounds. So this coin being a third of a pound, uh, an unskilled labourer would have earned six of these gold coins in a year. Uh, the average, the minimum wage in the UK at the moment is about 19, uh, $19,000 Australian. Uh, so the equivalent value is about three and a half, three thousand two hundred dollars for one of these coins back in 1350. So a lot of money to left buried in a field. Uh, there were 12 of them, so you're talking uh, 36 or 37 thousand Australian current Australian dollars buried in a field, and uh, along with uh, several hundred silver pennies, and there was some Scottish silver pennies and other things in there as well. A uh, quite a remarkable metal detecting find and congratulations to the three gentlemen in Scotland who found it uh, I do like those sorts of stories right a few more hellos hello Stephen hello Cam hi Greg hi Matt uh, hello Glennis and hello another Greg and hello Sean how are you right now uh, I've been having a bit of fun this week talking to uh, chat GPT chat GPT is an AI uh, English chat tool where you can uh, some very smart people have loaded up this chat tool with a, a wealth of knowledge and you can ask it questions and it responds to you in plain English it's been in the news a lot in the last couple of weeks uh, with school kids going back uh, so there's various state governments have said that they won't allow chat GP to be used to uh, use as a research tool some state governments have said that they will there was an interesting article in the paper on the weekend where they, some journalists asked chat GPT to write a couple of essays and then they had them marked 
by a, a high school teacher so if you haven't used chat gpt it is well worth having a play with it's uh, it's quite remarkable actually the information you can get out of it um and yeah alex birkin is saying hey google yeah it is it is kind of like google but it's on it's on steroids i guess it sort of it seems to take the google results and digest them and spit them out in plain english uh and I was asking it some coin collecting questions uh, last week and this week just to see how accurate it was. Now it doesn't learn, so if you uh, imbibe it with new knowledge, it doesn't relate that knowledge to other people. Uh, it, its, its depth of knowledge of Australian coins was fairly shallow. It was making mistakes quite often when I was asking it questions. Uh, if you point out the mistakes, it's, it, it thanks you, and at least in the chat session that you're in, it remembers those mistakes. Uh, but whether you go back and ask them again again the next time and it makes the same mistakes, I'm not sure. But uh, according to it, it doesn't learn. So that knowledge isn't uh, stored away somewhere. So what I thought I would do is I would ask ChatGPT uh, what the five main mistakes that coin collectors are make. Uh, and i got to say, I was kind of pleasantly surprised with the results because you know a few of these would probably be my top five as in my top five as well so we'll just read them out here uh, so the top five mistakes that coin collectors make as per chat GPT number one not researching the authenticity and value of a coin before purchasing it uh, yeah that's a great one uh, Catherine and I still I mean we're collectors Catherine and I are both collectors uh, we still when we're out and about looking at collectibles and things like that and we see something that catches our eye uh, that we don't know anything about, uh, every now and again we still buy it and make a mistake because we pay too much for it. Um, and we kick ourselves every time we do it, but then the next time we see something that we really like, uh, if we can't control ourselves we generally make the same mistake again. Now, most collectors uh, are the same in the beginning. Uh, if something catches their interest, then they will make an impulse purchase and perhaps pay too much. The authenticity is always a problem. Uh, and last week we talked about PCGS, fake PCGS slabs. Uh, if you see a bargain, sometimes your common sense is overwhelmed by uh, your financial sense and you make a poor decision. So that was that's a really good point that ChatGPT made there. Not researching the authenticity and value of a coin before purchasing it. The next one is is one of our big ones here in the shop. Not properly storing or handling your coins, causing damage and devaluing the coin. So we talked about the we talked about the uh, the white baby set packaging being marked, uh, being easily marked. Now those sets will start coming here into the shop in the next few years and if they have grubby fingerprints on them or they're marked or they're scuffed or whatever we certainly will pay less for them and they will not be able to be sold online. We can't sell damaged stock online. We only sell it here in the shop. PVC damaged coins, uh, they can only be purchased for a fraction of uh, their cost because of the work either involved removing the PVC or the permanent damage that is done to those coins. So, you know, that again is a really good point. It's one that we have talked about before. Handle your coins properly, store them properly, keep them humidity controlled, don't let them suffer from mechanical damage, don't store coins in PVC or otherwise harmful packaging. Ideally, you'd leave your coins in the original packaging rather than taking it out. Uh, and if you do take it out, you'd keep the packaging. So again, a great, great point there. The next one, I'll probably need to be a little bit careful about what I say, buying into rare or limited edition coin scams. Now, in the USA, they have a lot of uh, online shopping TV, and there are coin sellers who sell via that channel who uh, suck people in via limited releases and, um, you know, limited time offers and get one, you know, at, at get the first coin in a series at a quarter of the retail price and then get all the rest at full retail and I won't mention any of the companies here in Australia that use the same sort of things, uh, same sort of tactics but uh, you know we do get stuff in here that we pay two or three dollars for that people have paid eighty dollars for. Uh, they are base metal coins you know copper or, or copper nickel and they're gold plated or silver plated so they have no intrinsic value uh, they're not Australian, they're from some country of convenience, whether it be in the South Atlantic or the Pacific somewhere. 
unfortunately, people get duped into signing up for these coin series, and uh, because you know perhaps the first coin is free or very close to free, but then every coin after that uh, is expensive, and those sets do not sell on the secondary market. By the secondary market, I mean once you have purchased it and you try to sell it second hand, they have no value. Uh, so, you know, as I said, we get coins in here from countries of convenience that have no intrinsic value uh, that we just put in trays on the front counter for $6 or $8. And those coins originally cost $80 or $100 each. And you know what? They sit there for ages. Even at eight, $6 or $8 each, they sit there for a long time. People don't want them. So, you know, don't get caught up in mail order, limited release, uh, coin marketing scams. I wouldn't say that they're scams, but coin marketing uh, schemes. Okay, we'll say schemes instead of scams. Again, great advice there from ChatGPT. Next one, uh, probably not on my top five, but still a good point. Keep accurate records of their collection, making it difficult to track the value and history of their coins. Now, um, this is a really good one because for a couple of reasons. One is is that you know it's always nice to know if you've made money on your collection. Uh, but the flip side of that is that uh, unfortunately you'll probably find out that most of your collection you lose money on. Uh, coin collecting is just a hobby. It's not an investment. It is difficult to make money doing this. Uh, but the other good reason to keep good records is to stop buying you the stop buying the same thing twice. Uh, if you don't keep records, uh, and we have some gentlemen that come in here that have records on their phone, excellent records on their phone, so that when they come in here they know what it is that they're after, uh, and that stops them from buying multiple sets that they've already got. So keeping those accurate records will save you money, uh, it'll hopefully allow you to sell things for a profit, and perhaps just allow you to keep track of how much you've invested into your collection. So a great bit of advice there. The last one here. Uh, is probably my favourite one, and this would probably be my number one uh, number one point that coin collectors make is focusing too much on short term profit and not considering the long term value of their collection. Uh, unfortunately, with uh, mint product, mint product, you know whether it be from Perth Mint or the, the Royal Australian Mint, uh, the barriers to entry are low. You don't need to know anything about coins. You don't need to know anything about grading. Uh, you don't need to know anything about uh, authenticity of coins. If you buy a new mint product, you just hand over your money and you get it. So that means that people that are only interested in flipping that product uh, get into the market really easily. And as such, the prices of new mint product are highly volatile. Uh, as a consequence, people see it as a way of making money and making it quickly. Uh, we get multiple people in here a week who are in here because they've been looking at coin collecting groups on Facebook and they want to invest in some coins. Uh, and our answer to that is we're not an investment shop, we're not investment advisors, we're a hobby shop. And uh, you know, and my usual response after that is, is if it was so easy to pick what was going up in value then that's all Catherine and I would do, we wouldn't need a shop. We would just pick what goes up in value and buy that and sit on it and then sell it later. Uh, but of course, it isn't that easy. So yeah, focusing too much on short-term profit and not considering the long-term value of their collection. That's a great, a great thing to focus on. And I feel like moving away from that idea of short-term profits and long-term value is much more likely to create long-term coin collectors uh, the coin collecting hobby is littered with the burning remains of collectors who have dropped out of the hobby really quickly because they've had their fingers burnt chasing short-term profits. Uh, Catherine and I don't collect for profit. We collect because we enjoy what we collect. I still get a thrill out of buying things that I haven't seen before and popping them into my collection. And you know what? I sell them and I get whatever I get for them. I don't keep track of what they cost me particularly. Uh, well, that's not true. I do, but I don't need to sell them for a profit. I sell them for whatever I get. If they've come out of my collection, you know, you win some, you lose some. Right, chat GPT. Great little tool. Great fun asking it those questions. I'll probably ask it some more questions a few times this year, and we'll run through its answers because I feel like they're pretty good 
basic answers um, and perhaps one day we'll do a bit of a video on what it doesn't know on things that it gets wrong with Australian coins right we'll have a look at some comments here Catherine says that gold creatures of the deep mint mark coins and Vegemite sets are in transit so she must have just got an email from the mint uh, of course we have been out of Vegemite unk sets for a couple of weeks so we've been out of Vegemite proof sets the whole year uh, we were expecting them in late in February. Hopefully that means that the Vegemite proof sets will be back in stock very soon. Um, Aaron says that ChatGPT told him that John Howard had passed away. Uh, no, he's very much still alive, so not right there. Uh, hello, Gwen. Hello, pal. And Sean Max says, agree. It's not a get-rich-quick hobby. It's about enjoying the coins or notes. I love the feeling of history when I hold certain coins and the thoughts that they evoke. Um... Look, Sean, I think you've hit the nail on the head there, and that's what gives me a thrill about buying things I haven't seen before. Uh, I know I've said this before, but coins are essentially mundane items. They are things that are part of commerce. Uh, often they don't really have much intrinsic value, but I just find it fascinating that a coin with very little value can outlast uh, the humans that made it by hundreds and hundreds of years and passed down to us and we can hold it and sit there and think about the hands that it passed through and the lives that those people led and I feel like that's where the real value of coin collecting is rather than uh, in the dollars. Uh, I certainly get more enjoyment out of that than I do the dollars. Uh, David says, I'm not sure if scam is the right term per se as you, hang on a second, as you they send you what they are advertising i don't have the right term but dodgy at best i'd describe it as it's not it's a subscription mail order service david and unfortunately the marketing often is targeted at a generation of people who think they're doing the right thing uh, they're buying things for their children or their grandchildren uh, they're not necessarily interested in the hobby but they hand over their credit card and they pay you know, a fairly hefty amount for coins or that have no intrinsic value, uh, that have very limited collector interest. And it is, I feel like, a lot of those things targeted at the uh, at the uneducated, the numismatically uneducated. And, uh, you know, it doesn't sit right with me. And it often falls onto my shoulders to tell them or their, their children or their grandchildren that they wasted their money uh, you know often they don't even look at the coins they don't enjoy them they just buy them thinking that they're a wonderful investment and uh, you know they've just wasted their money and I hate telling people that but I don't know what else to tell them you know I, I, I just don't know what else to say Paul says uh, have I asked chat GPT about the HH2 dollar yet no I'll do that and report back next week. What a great suggestion. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> uh, hi, Joseph. Uh, and Alex says they use tricky word like silver when they're just silver plated. Uh, silver enriched. Silver enriched is a common term that you see on those sorts of coin, Alex. Silver enriched, which just means silver plated, of course. Um, it's interesting watching some companies' products uh, get debased over time. Uh, you know, coin sets from 15 years ago had 50% silver in them and then they dropped to 33% and now they're silver enriched. So, you know, and they're selling these things for the same price. That's quite interesting to see how that silver content changes as they try to maximise their profits. Hi, Jay. And David says it doesn't sit right with him. That's the mail order coin business. And hello, Petra. And Jay, I'm not talking about anyone. Okay, I do not mention people's and the company's names here, uh, so I might actually just remove that comment if that's all right with you. Um, yeah, I don't talk about companies' names here. I think, you know, when we're talking about uh, mail order coins and things like that, I think we're all aware of the companies here in Australia that do it. I don't begrudge them from doing it, uh, but like I said, I don't like being the person who tells people uh, that their coins often aren't worth much after they've paid a lot for them. Uh, thank you, Andrew, for your kind words there about these sessions. And hello, Cam. How are you? Right. That's it for this week. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm glad that the sound has worked okay this week. Uh, we will be back next Monday, uh, same time as always, 12 o'clock on Mondays. As always, if you've got any topics you'd like to see us cover, please send us a message, give us a phone call. 
uh, email us, have whatever way you like, and we'll do our best to cover it. Uh, it's been fun today. Thank you, everyone, for your interaction. Uh, and happy collecting. Stay safe. We'll be back next week. Bye for now.